actually uh, have been troubleshooting a couple odd update issues. And um, I want to spend some time talking about that and spend some time talking about um, what we can do to um, at least partially handle it. Because there, there, be, there seemed to be some issue um, that we were at least able to partially resolve um, uh, in doing the update. Let me call up, um, let me bring up the uh, thing that we were working on, and let me add a date, because the first manifestation of this was when we tried to update a date. All right, so let me bring up the application, and I'm not sure if there's any dates in uh, our tables, but we can certainly add one if there is a, a date. That is a good question. Shouldn't have this problem, I wouldn't think. That when I ran it in access, it worked perfectly. Right. So it's, it's something to do with SQL, I think. Yeah, that is a good question, and that that might be one thing I will do to troubleshoot is is to see that. Um, it just I, wherever I put in a question mark, it pop up. Well, well, yeah. Give me a box. Well, you're not comparing that. Uh, yeah, um, let, let's take a look at this. Um, anytime there's a question mark, right, access is interpreting it as a, a parameter. So that's not really apples to apples, as they say. Let's go here and pull up the example from last time. especially worried about my one cat because he's, by the way, with skunks, because he's like a black and white tuxedo cat. And from what I've seen in cartoons, sometimes skunks get confused and oh, think okay. that, yeah, <laughs> think that, that that's actually, uh, you know, another skunk and, you know. Okay, that's a bad joke. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> what is the cat's name? The cat's name is Jackson. Because <laughs> it was always, it was always back off Jackson, back off Jackson. So he became Jackson. He was actually our neighbor's cat, but he's he always came in and like hung out at our house. So we just, uh, you know, kind of took over him. What the neighbors have to say? Well, no, they they were like fine with it. It's like, yeah, you might as well, you know, you might as well keep him. You know, he's always over there. I think I think he liked playing with my daughters. My daughters were a lot younger at the time, and I think they, they played with him a lot. And as a kitten, that was probably more appealing to him. We had a cat that would start if we left our door cracked. Mm -hmm. He would run in the house, run down in the basement, and make himself at home. Wouldn't leave. Okay. <laughs> They'd have to go down there and get him. Carry wow. Him. The next day, he'd be out in the basement again. Yeah. Well, well, we had a similar situation where we thought this there was a stray cat. And, and he, would, he would come over our house and hang out with us and all that and would take them in and fed them, you know, because we're saps, basically. And um, then, um, then it disappeared for, like, long periods of time. And then it come back. And then it disappeared. And then it come back. One time he came back, and he had a note on his collar <laughs> that said something like, oh, no, 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 how did that go? One time he came back with a collar, that's right, with a collar. And that leads us to believe, hey, this must be someone's cat. Yeah. All right? So my wife attached a note to the collar <laughs> saying, you know, your cat comes and spends half or more of his time with us. Next time the cat comes back, it has a response note attached <laughs> to his collar saying who the person was, where they lived, and all that. We eventually adopted it, uh, but it like it really had sort of a bad attitude. It didn't really get along with uh, our other cats, and from what I heard, it actually spit at one of my daughter's friends, which I've never heard of a cat spitting at anyone before. But yeah, I didn't see it, but the claim was is that it, it just up and spit at her. So, all right. At any rate, let's go in and look at this. And let's look.
look at the database to see if we have a date field in there, given the date field was the first where this came up. hired field here. I'll make it a date time. And we'll put in a date hired for at least one of the people. For our buddy Blanchard, we'll say he got hired November 1st. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a page from scratch. I'll call it test. start page. All right. I will go in here and give it a grid view. The particular problems we had were on a details view. I, I don't think that would matter. So I'm going to try it with a grid view. If that doesn't yield the problem, then, then we'll, we'll try a uh, details view. <coughs> All right, and I'll create a data source. Configure it. say select FID F, uh, FF main FL main from and date hired from faculty <coughs> that'll be our source um, I'll then make my update statement say update faculty set FF name equals question mark comma FL name equals question mark date hired equals question mark where where what where FID equals question mark all right. Let's go and bind this. And let's enable editing. All right. So let's go in and try this out. With my luck, it will work. This is a case where I actually hope it doesn't work. So let's go and edit Tony and let's change his let's change his um, date hired to 2010. And I'll click update and I get an error. This is actually not the error that we had before. So let me go and take a look and make sure that 
that I, I didn't make another mistake. I got a bunch of different errors. Yeah. Oh, I forgot a comma here. So let me look closer. All right. Let's just go and run this. view on here. And then put our data source on here. Figure data source. Source query string, field name is ID. And let's go and bind these. And let's enable editing. Alright. as well. Okay. Well, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. All right. Um, so, <coughs> at this point, we're going to talk about our pets for the next hour. Now, um, at this point, I'm going to cover the same, I'm going to cover the same um, topic that I was going to cover, I was going to show you how to troubleshoot this. Kind of hard to show how to troubleshoot this given the fact that we don't 
have a problem. Let me look at the code for a second to see if something is there or not there. Okay, no, it's not there. What I thought the problem was is if you notice there are some select parameters here. And the select parameters um, tell where to get the, the value for the question mark. There's also update and delete parameters and insert parameters as well. But for some reason, they don't get generated. All right? At least not all the time. All right? Um, when you go and you create your own SQL statement like this, I notice that it doesn't seem to uh, generate the update parameters or the insert or the delete parameters. That's what I believed is leading to some problems uh, in the update. Um, but I can't verify that because, again, um, I thought this was was uh, a problem. One suggestion, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll treat we'll treat each issue individually. You can pull mine up and try it if you want. To see if it works here. Um, that that's a good point. I'd, I'd rather not because if there really is something quirky and unique, I, I'd rather not muddy the issue by by going over something that's really quirky. I'll, I'll just spend some time to look at it. <clears throat> is there something about update? Yeah, there's the update command, but that's all. Okay. But that's all. There's no update parameters. Let me go and let's use the built-in facility to create a SQL statement. Because I noticed when I was troubleshooting this, if you use the built-in uh, <coughs> query builder to create your SQL statement, that it does generate the the uh, parameters. All right. So let's try that. I'm sure this will be one of my top view videos on YouTube, you know. <laughs> let's go and let's open a new file, a web form, and we'll call it new test. And we'll make this our start page. Now let's go in. And so I can show you how these parameters look. Let's go in and let's create a grid view. All right. And let's create our SQL data source. Configure data source, my connection. I'm going to the dark side. I'm going to go and pick that we want the faculty table, and we want faculty ID, FL name, FF name, and date hire. Okay? So we're only interested in, in, in those fields. All right? Now, when you, when you go into this mode, notice that there's an advanced button. All right? And the advanced button, when you click it, it'll ask you if you want to generate the insert, update, and delete statements. I do. Use optimistic concurrency. We won't worry about that for now. All right? We, we will leave that unchecked. At any rate, I'm going to generate insert, update, and delete statements. Go let it generate it. And we'll see if it does things differently than when I created the update. Because if you remember, I created the update already that said update these three fields. All right? Let's see if it does it any way, any way different. All right. So I will go and next, finish. Then I will go and bind these. And I will enable editing. Now let's look at the source for this. Ah, notice what we get we get these update parameters. And actually, the solution that I had suggested when I was troubleshooting this with John is I, I suggested putting these in manually, all right? And it did it for us, all right? Notice what these parameters are. These parameters, 
These, if you remember, way when we first started looking at update statements, I said, let me show you the source code. I'm like, oh, I don't see something that I'm expecting to see. I didn't see the update parameters. So I was really a little bit at a loss at how it figured out what the matchup with what. But it seemed to be working, so I was, I was going with it, right? At any rate, notice what this does. It creates a set of parameters that match <coughs> up in sequence with the question marks in the update command. Here's the update command. <coughs> question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. The first question mark is FL name. So therefore it defines a parameter for FL name and it tells it that it is a string. Okay. The second one tells it that uh, the, the parameter that we want is FF name and it is also a string. The third one is date hired and notice the type is a date time. That's why this resolved at least some of the issues that John was facing because there was problems formatting the date. And therefore, my, my thought was is that without the parameter object, it didn't know what data type it was, so it didn't format it properly in the update statement. Uh, and then finally, the last one's an integer. So we'll go and... edit this update and, and it worked all right so a couple of people that have these update problems there's a student uh, the, there's John in here and then there is a student that's taking this independent study um, I guess we'll face this on a case-by-case -case basis uh, I am troubleshooting the the um, the uh, independent study students uh, issue. Um, I found some problems, but not solutions to others. Um, if I have something that is um, that, that the rest of the class will benefit from, I will post uh, an announcement describing it. All right. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if not, we can handle them on an individual basis. So, the, one second. So the point is, is if you run into difficulty doing an update, all right, contact me. Send me an email or whatever. Yes. Are, are you running 2010 here? Am I running what 2010? Uh, Visual Studio. Yeah, yeah, Visual Studio 2010. And not Office 2010. Office 2010. Same for you? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, it, it could be something like that. Uh, who knows? Yeah, you know, be a framework. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> when you update there, does it update in Access as well? Well, yeah, because it's the same database, right? It's pointing to the same database. So there, there are no, you know, this is just two ways of getting to that data in the database. You know, um, if you're going to put your application online and make a web application for it, there's no way that someone can open up a database on the web using access, but they can go through the pages that you give them to, to access it and, and manipulate it that way. All right, so now I don't really know what I want to talk about today because it, it kind of stole my thunder. Um, therefore, we're going to talk about We're going to talk about, let's see, I really expected to talk about this the full time. So um, there's two things we could do. Let's wrap one of the things up that was kind of left over from last time. All right. And then we will uh, do the other thing. All right. So rewind. I'm going to set this back as my start page. I think that's where I want to be. All right. All right. <coughs> Remember we talked about how clunky it, it was to add a new person, all right? To add a new person, we would have to pull up an existing person, click new, 
enter them in. And then click insert. That's sort of a clunky way to do it, right? I shouldn't have to pull up an existing person to um, add a new person. So let's talk about what we want to do, and let's talk about how we can accomplish it. First thing to do is, is we do need to have a, a clear idea in our mind what, what it is we want to accomplish. And then once we have that in mind, then we can go about um, trying to figure out how to do it. So here's what we want to accomplish. Right now the problem is this. Our grid view, among other things, has a link on the faculty member's name that takes you to a details page that has a grid view where the options are edit, delete, and new. So to add a new person, we have to click on an existing person, bring them up, and then click on new. That's not very intuitive. Why should you have to bring up an existing faculty person to add a new faculty person? Doesn't, doesn't really make sense. <clears throat> so, what are we going to do to fix it? How would you like this to work? All right? Let's think how we would like this to work. Here's how I would like this to work. All right? I would like to have, in addition to the grid that shows all the employees, I would like to have an add new faculty link here. Okay? And then, outside of the grid. Outside of the grid, right? Because I only need one add new faculty. I don't need an add new faculty on each row. That doesn't really make sense. I'm adding a new faculty. It has nothing to do with the existing faculty. So I want to put outside of the grid an add new faculty. And when I click on it, I want to go into insert mode with text boxes instead of labels. If I click the link, I want to go into edit mode, or, yeah, I want to go directly into edit mode, let's say. And let's say on this, on this page I don't want to delete it all, all right, just to keep it simple. So, <coughs> I want to make two or three, I don't know, it depends how you count them, uh, changes. Number one, I want to make another, I want to make a link to this page separate from the grid. A link to insert a new person. I want to change it so that if I click on the link of the person, it comes over and it's already in edit mode. In other words, it's in edit mode and the values of the text box, etc., are filled in. If I click on the add link, I want to go into insert mode where the text boxes are blank. All right? Does that make sense? I want to go into either edit mode or insert mode, depending on whether I clicked on a person's name or clicked the link. Now, is this going to be a separate page? Or well, is this going to be a separate page? I guess it's a question. From the well, you would be updating the same information that you would possibly be inserting, so it's really the same form design. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's not really the exact same link, is it? Because you want the edit to already populate that row. Okay. All right. Good observations. All right. Um, the functionality is pretty much the same, right? In fact, we already have a details view that allows you to insert and delete. The problem is, is the mechanics of it is clunky. So that page already, already handles insertion and deletion. And fundamental rule of programming 
D-R-Y, do not repeat yourself. Anytime where you're going to ask yourself,